Hey everyone, welcome back to Rhythm Railroad. I'm making a short video on my ferry system um, and also my seaport here. Um, I had a few requests asking how I went about making my ferry system work. More specifically about the, the mechanism under the bench work uh, that allows it to work correctly. Um, but before I get to the specifics of that, I just want to kind of give an overview of why I even have a ferry system to begin with. Um, I was a little stuck on figuring out how to get my trains from the, the main level here uh, to the upper level here and back down, obviously. Um, and I don't have room for a helix or two helixes. Um, and so I was a little stuck. I, I, you know, I did want an upper level. And at times I was like, maybe I just shouldn't have one at all. But then I, I came across a few videos um, that inspired me to go ahead and, and, and do this. Um, so the first video I saw that I came across about a year and a half ago was of this gentleman that had a ferry system. It was more, more like a barge system, um, one level um, with an apron and everything. Uh, but the concept was that you would load the train on and then you would physically pick up the, the barge and bring it to the next level, align it, and then unload that way. Um, that's cool. I was actually, that was my first plan. And if you actually take a look at my, my, um, my ship here, this line here was my barge. So the, this lower level here was my barge originally. And then I just added sidewalls and, and the upper level, the upper deck rather. So that was the first video. The second video that inspired me was this gentleman that had an entire scene that was kind of like cut out and it would lift the whole scene, water, background, everything. And it came up to the second level so you can make a transition and the whole scene would come back down again. And, uh, you know, that's how that would work. But I saw pros and cons with both systems and I was trying to see how I would get around it. And I think, if, you know, after, after just brainstorming, I, I came up with this concept, which I, I'm very happy with. And I don't know that anybody else has ever done something like this, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy that it's working for me. Um, so here's what happens, basically. I didn't want this scene to be interrupted while I was working up here on loading or unloading the ferry, and vice versa. I wanted this scene to be whole while I was down here working on this on this ferry so for example right now the ferry is down here so all the work's being done here but if this scene was completed you know it would look like this eventually um it's not i'm not interrupting this so you don't see any any um you know motors or pins or mechanisms you know in the way and so i have two separate scenes that are completely fine um but once if i want to move this barge from here to there I need to make sure I do it and be able to return this scene back to where it was. So, you know, I've posted a bunch of videos on how I do that, like actually showing the, the ship lifting and how I do that. So I'm going to get to that later if I have time. But what I want to show you is the how I, I do it using, and what mechanisms I'm using. Um, so number one, the main mechanism that I use to lift that ship through that scene and and um, and up through and, and and keep it up there is basically this here, and this is based on another video that I saw that had nothing to do with trains. In fact, it was just a spice rack that this guy was building um, that would um, basically disappear into his countertop in his kitchen, and he had it's basically a drawer that he flipped vertically instead of horizontal like you know like a railroad drawer and he would he actually attached a bunch of shelves across uh to put his spice uh bottles on there and so whenever he would need spices he was he would make the whole drawer go through his uh countertop and that's how he would access his spices and then when he was done he would just bring it right back down and it would disappear giving him more counter space i thought that was kind of cool but what i did is i i you know, I adapted it to this by basically saying to myself, well, what if this ship was sitting on top of the countertop and it was getting pushed by the drawer, you know, flap or whatever, that, that, the top part, 
uh, far enough so that it can make it all the way up. You know, and at first I was like, well, it's going to be tricky because we've got to keep it stable and it's got to be perfectly straight and how it's going to get through the other scene. You know, there was a lot to think about, but I, I, I was surprised that I got it, you know, on, on after a few attempts. Um, so here's how I did it. I basically created a, a nice solid box. I reinforced it nicely and I added that back plate there to, to make it um, nice and stable. Um, and then I went out and bought... Uh, drawer guides like heavy-duty ones that slide very very smoothly they have nice bearings on them uh, And they're obviously are very long because I got to get it to the next level and then the last part was this um, They call this a linear actuator, which is basically um, a threaded rod inside that is spun by this motor and as it spins it's it's got an, a nut inside and it pushes um, another rod or another like cylinder up forcing the, the top part to uh, push out and up. So um, the only thing that I was not happy with was that I built the box first, thinking that the actuator was going to be this long. And when I got it in the mail, it was actually much longer. So I, I added an extension, uh, which it doesn't matter. It's still solid as a rock. Um, and, you know, this, this sink clip here is up there, which is what's forcing everything to go up. So the white piece of wood is the the uh, um, support under the bench work. Um, but what's moving up is basically I just cut a hole out in the bench work and I put it right back in. You know, the piece of wood that I cut out, I put right back in and I, I attached it to that white piece of wood uh, where the pin is. And then um, you can't see it because it's under the ship right now. But let me show you what happens. Um, this double pull, double throw switch controls the motor. It's just a basic, you know, 12 volt power source uh, hooked up to the switch. And it's an on, off, on switch. And basically when, when you're up here, it's got one polarity. And when you have it down here, it's the opposite polarity. It flips the plus and minus, allowing you to change directions. So um, basically if I just hit it up, it'll bring the system upward. So let me just show you how that works. I'm not gonna go all the way up, but I'm gonna show you just how, how that goes. So as you can see, it's pushing the ship up. There's a pin, and the guides, the drawer guides are holding it you know, stable. So just getting a little closer here. That's how it's attached, and it's just basically you know lifting that. Now, what you, what you see here, the green piece of wood is the, it's just a, that's just the bench work. I cut, a, I cut a hole straight down. There's a hole. And then what I did is I, um, I added a thin piece of plastic on top of this uh, to create the water effect. And I overlapped it on purpose so that when you bring it down, it disappears. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically push it through just so you guys see how, how it works. Even though I've already shown this before, but... This, this piece of wood would also be scenic with the water effect in the same way, you know, as the other one. But um, once I take that out, what I'm left with is the pegs that support. These pegs support the, uh, the piece of wood. But I can slide them out. Sorry about the lighting. I can slide them out. And I'll eventually get that a little better. But once I slide those out, then it gives me clearance. For the ship to come through so there's the ship uh so let me keep going up here and this does take a little bit long but it's, i'm glad because I don't, I don't want it to be like flying up either um, i think it's just just the right speed right now so you can see it goes through perfectly clear every single time not a problem um and as it goes up what i'd like it to do is go past the uh, point where you know it would be level with with the water here and the reason I do that is because now I can I have access to the pegs to bring them back in without get, you know my thumb hitting the ship same thing over here and then the only thing is that I, I added these these pegs here to bring the ship back up to the, the level of the water. So once I do that, 
Then I just bring the ship down by going in the opposite direction. And now it just basically hovers. But the cool thing is that now I have a scene here. It's a full scene. You know, with the exception of a little light that comes through there. But, you know. And then the platform continues down. Uh, and allows this scene to be completed. So you'll see that once the platform hits, you know, the, the water level, it almost disappears. And you know, I obviously put this texture up here also, and created like a flap with the plastic that, that uh, goes over that. So watch what happens here. It almost disappears right before your eyes here. So, um, you know, you have to really look at it to, to realize that it's not um, just a, a straight piece of uh, scenery there. Um, also, I, um, I built this wedge here. This wasn't originally here. The bench rail used to just go like that and like this. But I wanted, I wanted to make this a little wider and also for that ship to have some kind of water in front of it. So I just built this, but I had to build it where it was removable. So this whole thing just pops right out because I have to be able to get to the tracks back there. So I needed to get closer to the bench work. But that's just... It's got nothing to do with this. I just wanted you to know, in case you, you notice that there's a seam here. Uh, that's why. Okay, so that's that. Now, the only other thing is that um, once you get the ship to where it's going, there's a little adjustment I have to make manually to allow uh, for alignment here and for also for clearance. Um, but now here's the other part of this. Um, once you get everything in place, and you have a full scene here and a full scene here. Now, I need to be able to get the tracks from the apron. So this train would be pushing, you know, the cars in this way. Once it loads and it finishes loading the bottom level, you know, I don't have to come back up here. So here's how this works. Same exact concept as the platform that lifted the ship, but in a miniature version. So what I did was I built my own. I bought a little slow motion motor. Uh, I think they call it a low speed, high torque motor. Uh, and it's ba basically, the motor's this way, but it's got a, like transfer gears in there so that it spins the rod in the opposite direction. Um, and it's a six volt motor, it's tiny, it's cheap. It's like, it was like five bucks. Um, I wired it up to another double pull level throw switch here. So the top one here is for the upper level, and this one's for the lower level, you know, because I need obviously two aprons. So what happens is once I uh, uh, click it up, well, let me show you the rest of the mechanism. So the, the motor is attached to this uh, rod that's threaded. And what I did is I took like a U-channel piece of metal. Let me see if you are right there. I'm trying to get some light in there, okay. And I, I put a barrel nut inside the U-channel, and I don't know if you can see that it's dented. Like the U-channel is kind of curved around it. I just basically took, took pliers and, and squeezed it in there so it stays put. So what happens is as the motor turns, it acts the same way as the actuator down there. It, it forces the nut to be pushed up with the U-channel, and the U-channel I don't know if you can see this, the U-channel is pushing that entire bridge up. So this bridge is basically, this is just, you know, not even attached. Uh, I will attach it eventually, but it's just riding on these hinges here. So as I go up, you know, this is just basically a flap. Um, so it's pushing that and it's forcing the bridge up. So let me show you how that works. Um, once I click the switch, once I hit the switch here, it allows the bridge to come up slowly, which is what I like. It's more realistic, nice and slow, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go all the way up because I don't want to waste time, but it'll basically align itself with the top. The only thing is that I can't leave it in the middle because the middle position is the one that protrudes the most into the ship. So I can't have, um, then I can't go up and down with the ship. Okay, so obviously, you know, once I'm done with that, then I can take the... Um, the platform, you know, once I'm done loading the, the ship up there, I can take the platform and go go pick it up again. So I'll bring it back up. Um, and the one thing I've noticed is that, I mean, considering I did this basically by, I just kind of eyeballed it. Um, 
it's pretty aligned, like going up and down. It, 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 it sets the boat really close to the tracks. Uh, closer than I even imagined it. I thought it was going to be like a mess as it went up and down because there's a lot of travel here. This, this is this is a big distance. It's probably almost two feet um, or more. Um, so once the platform makes contact with the ship, it, it picks it up a little bit. I take these out. And then uh, obviously I got to get clearance here. So I got to take these pegs out. I want to make this a little bit more, um, you know, easy to take out, or even just like a, some kind of mechanism that does it automatically. Figure that out later. Um, so now I'm clear. All I got to do is go on the ship, and we'll bring it back down to the main level. Um, just a few things about the ship. I scratch build the whole thing, you know, uh, from styrene and wood. Well, the entire ship body is, is wood, and the, the details are styrene. But um, the smokestacks I built myself, and what I did is I, I put in um, smoke makers inside the smokestacks, so they, they actually work. They actually blow the smoke through. Uh, oh, and the cool thing about the actuator is that when it stops, it's got an automatic off switch. So even if I leave the switch on, it won't burn it out. But I like to just return it to you know. So it's a neutral place anyway. So yeah, the smokestacks actually work. I can't show you right now because I haven't hooked up the uh, the power source yet, but um, the um, tower or the, uh, I don't know what you call this thing, uh, the structure here, I, I built from just pieces of sirene and I put some railings on there. And then I, I made like these, um, these knuckles, these uh, couplers here encased in like, steel boxes and that's what holds the uh, the cars in place so you know they, they actually they lock in so now i can't you know what i mean in case the, the ship goes a little wobbly it, it'll hold the, the cars in place and it will roll out the, the front um the cool the good thing is that when i when i was doing the whole mechanism for some reason the drawer kicks a little bit that way so as it's coming up, it's straight, and then it goes boop, and it just kicks out a tiny amount, and it forces the cars that way. So it's actually good, because if it kicked it the other way, all the cars would be rolling out the front. And then I'd have to make some kind of barrier here. But that holds every, every car in place um, nicely. Um, so yeah, once, once the ship gets down here, then obviously now I'm dealing with this apron. So, you know, it's, it's pretty close. All i got to do is move it up a little bit. And the top level is always going to have a little bit of a gap because um, just the way the alignment is. But um, now I would go to my other switch, which is here. And that's for the lower apron. And it works the same way as the, the upper apron. In fact, the motor is set up the same way, right there. So there's the, uh, the rod. And the U-channel is there. And then obviously it goes through. I don't know if you can see it under there. Hard to see, but it's under there. <laughs> and it pushes the uh, apron up exactly like the one on top. So here, let's say, I don't know, let's say um, I'm going to unload these cars. You know, they're perfectly lined up. They work just fine. And I can get that even, even closer. Let's say I don't like the way that's, and there's like a little bump in there. So I could just lower it a little, tiny bit. And now, much more so that's that and then if I needed to get the the lower cars out I would have to obviously lower this one now, I don't know why this motor is so much quieter I think it's like so much nicer it's very smooth and obviously it lowers the um, the bridge down to the lower level um, you know obviously the uh, the mechanism is the same concept. You just got the spinning rod here. You can see. Um, so, uh, as you can see here, I kind of overshot it a little bit. So I'm going to bring it back up. Until the lines pretty much there. 
And then I could always, you know, move it a little closer. I guess in real life they would, uh, they'd have to make some adjustments also, depending on the tide and all that. Um, and obviously, you know, I could, I could roll the cars in and out that way also. Um, so that's basically it, you know. It's all linear act actuators on all three parts of it. The platform, linear actuator, and then the two aprons, mini actuators. Um, so that's how it works. I hope this helped, and I hope that if you're going to do something similar on your layout, um, that you can make it work like this. Um, I guess if you have any questions, just post it on my, on my YouTube channel or on this uh, post, and I'll try to answer as much as possible. Um, uh, I don't have like a real system. Like a lot of the things that I do, I do by eye and by feel. And I really don't, I'm not like a, uh, an engineer by any chance, by any means or anything like that. Um, I just kind of imagine things and I, I know basic things, um, as like how they work. Um, so this is just a bunch of ideas that I slapped together and I came up with this. Okay. The only other uh, thing I would have to do up here, just to finish up here is return the, the pegs. Because, you know, obviously the scene is interrupted right now. And then take my water. <laughs> it eventually will be water. And just uh, drop it in. Just like that. And then uh, what I plan on doing here, just to avoid the gaps, is just adding a thin piece of plastic on top of this also that overlaps both there and there and on the sides. So the same way I did the one down there, uh, so that it, you can't even tell once you're shooting from here. You can barely tell now. So that is it. Um, let me know if this helped. Great.